as I'm sure you can hear, it doesn't sound very good in here. One shock absorber's decided to come into the cabin in the boot, as you can see, and the other one isn't far behind, so I think we're gonna have to rectify this problem. So I'm in rural North California, and I'm just driving down the main road, and I see something that's very strange to see in Northern California. Okay, I tell you what, it is. What I saw it for a millisecond and it is exactly what I thought it is. Why is that in Northern California? There's just a British red phone box in the middle of the countryside in California. I wonder when the last time this phone box was next to a British car. That's gotta be a few years ago. I'd say it's been here a while. <coughs> Crazy what you find. I don't think he wants me here. Would you be quiet? I'm trying to film something. So as you can hear, it's not really very pleasant sounding in here. It's quite loud. Because the top mount's disintegrated, all the weight is just resting on the boot plastic. The interior trim is what is holding the back corner of the car up. And these roads, I don't know how long that's gonna go before it basically snaps and then the shock absorber will just be in the boot. Yeah, these are road, quite bumpy roads as I'm sure you could tell by that. What the fuck's going on here? What's this? What's going on? Are you all right? Oh, <laughs> oh, and it went down there. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. Well, yeah, I guess the rubber road's just down there, so... Yeah. They overheated the brakes and crashed. What dickheads? How do you manage that? <laughs> and another thousand miles are on it. The BMW that doesn't stop giving. So just gonna get off the motorway. Um, there's something I'd quite like to see. It is so cold and so windy. The Pacific. I made it all the way to the West Coast. As we drive down the California coast, next to the Pacific, I've noticed that the thermostat is now stuck open. It's not every day that your diesel gauge and your coolant gauge are pointing in the same direction. That's kind of cool. Okay, everybody, Canada, here we go. We made it. Nearly 90 days, three months in the USA. Now we're crossing into Canada. This borderline is very short. You know, I'm used to the Ukrainian ones where you're there for like 12 hours. See how this goes. I imagine they don't see many British registered vehicles. Hello. Where do you live? Uh, I live in the United Kingdom. Do you import this car? It, it's on a temporary import permit. So explain to me why you brought this car. Cheers. Uh, it was cheaper I'm over here for so long, it was cheaper to ship it. How long are you away from home for? Um, I've been out the UK now for the best part of three months. I'm going back in about six weeks. How much was it to ship it? Uh, 2,000 US with the US like road insurance, and then I think $100 for six weeks of Canadian road so insurance. you're here now for six, six weeks? Yeah, then back over. Thank you very much. Bye. Nice to meet you. That was a lot of questions. That was a lot of questions. Wow. Oh shit, I, I forgot to tell her God save the king. I hope she doesn't think I'm rude. We're in Canada. Not sure where to go. We should probably work something out. So I've come across this bloke from Ghana. And he shipped this. See, it's on Ghanaian license plates, number plates. And he shipped it all the way. What's your name? I'm Joseph. 
Just so, yes, five, five continents, continents, one, one car, car, one, one crazy driver. driver. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Ghana. Two spare tires. Yeah, yeah, two spare tires yeah. So you're you're from Ghana. Yes, I'm from Ghana. And we've met in the petrol station. Yeah. I saw the Ghanaian number plates. Yeah, in Vancouver. In Vancouver, in um, Canada. I've just got here. Yeah. But it's really cool, bro. It's the 6.3 litre. Yes. So, yes, I've had a shave. But at least the car hasn't been towed away this time. But we do have a parking ticket. But I was told in British Columbia, parking's free because it's a national holiday. Vehicles with unpaid tickets may be towed for future violations. So it is very rainy, but we are sailing to a place called Langdale, which is one of the islands just off the west coast. We get to skip the line because we don't have a reservation. I'm not sure how that works. Hello. Hi. Um, I'd like to go to Langdale, please. Okay. Yep. Any propane or barbecue tanks on the car today? Any propane? Oh, I thought you said cocaine. No, I don't, I don't have cocaine, propane, or barbecue I'll tanks. Take so. <laughs> A fuel surcharge. I would have thought the fuel for the ferry would have already been included in the price. That's very odd. <laughs> woof, woof. This is a bad place to be with a car that renownedly has very bad handbrake. There's some big things on this ferry. I have set sail on the ship in a very foggy Canada actually. Seeing all the life jackets I've decided to do some research on this boat and over the years it's had a few disasters. But it's crashed into the dock twice. It's crashed into a tug and somebody stole the ATM machine and threw it overboard. But that's not including the time that a tourist crashed their car into it. Oh, and it's been on fire several times. I, I've never known a boat to have so many incidents. Well, the Titanic did, but that was really just one incident. This has had loads of small incidents. 